Welcome to Gapology Radio with your hosts, Mark Tinas and Brian Brockhoff. This is your leadership development podcast where they share unique insights with the purpose of helping leaders achieve their greatest potential. You can learn more by reading their books, Gapology, Imbar, and Speed of Purpose, or by participating in one of their workshops. All of this and more can be found on their website, gapology.org. Hey everybody, welcome to Gapology Radio. I'd like to take a second and remind you to click over to our website after each podcast. Each week we also share a full blog post that's a supplement to each episode. These blogs are designed to pull together the tips that we discuss here and organize them into a series of steps that you can begin to apply to your leadership today to make all of our conversations come to life. Okay, so let's go ahead and get tonight's show rolling with Martinez. Hey, Mark, how are you doing? Hey, Brian, I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Busy, busy. I've got a training class I've been prepping for all day. It's uh, tomorrow, so I'm excited about that. And I'm fighting 100 degree temperatures and wildfires in California. So, oh, wow. Sounds That's, similar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe in some way. Yep. Yeah. It's been raining nonstop last, uh, last day and a half here. Um, so I'm sure you'd love some of that rain. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It's pretty, it's gorgeous here when it's 100. So, yeah. Well, that's good. And it's a dry heat. So, yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah, it gets humid here when it gets hot. So, yeah. But um, all right. So tonight, um, this is pretty interesting. So tonight's topic comes from a listener that I was chatting with recently online. I was chatting with him and and he's currently in a role that he's been in, oh, a number of years. And he's worked in this particular industry really his whole life. And although he he enjoys it more or less and he enjoys the role that he's in more or less, it's really not the thing that he's most passionate about. And he keeps going back to thinking about considering taking a leap and, and trying his hand at something completely new, totally out of the realm of his experience. But kind of, you know, fear is really in the way of that, uh, you know, taking that leap out of what's comfortable. So I thought this could be a great topic for us to discuss and share some ideas from Gapology and all that. What do you think? You know, I think it's a common issue today. So I think it's very relevant. Um, a lot of people find themselves in a role that they're not in love with. Yep. And uh, what do you do? You know, what do yeah. you do? What are your options? Uh, where do you go? You know, you need the income potentially, but mm-hmm. what uh, what do you what do you do? So that's yeah. a great topic. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I think we as adults get set in kind of our uh our income, right? We we're set at a certain income level and we build our lives around that. And to take that chance to start over potentially at the bottom of the ladder. Um, I mean, that that's a lot of fear involved there. So, um, you know, I think that's one of the first things we have to do is kind of try to take that out of the equation. Cause that's really that, a huge barrier that can prevent us from, from going after our dreams. Yeah, that, I mean, that's very real today, right. but at the same time, it's an incredible job market. So talented people are hard to come by mm-hmm. and they can go to work just about anywhere. So there are a lot of options for people today and uh, organizations need them. And uh, unemployment rate is very low, but at the same time, it's even lower than it appears uh, mm-hmm. because there's this talent gap that's in there. And so the best people, uh, the most skilled uh, are incredibly valuable. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, having that vision of really what you want to do and and taking that leap, you know, maybe today is, a, you know, the best time to try that. Yeah. So I've got a couple of tips for okay. anyone that feels they're in that situation. Um, they're not really in, in an order. So normally I do things in a you know, here's the first priority. These are sort of similar in terms of their importance. So don't, don't read anything into the order. But the first thing I would look at is what do you do best? Really step back and look at yourself and say, okay, what am I great at? What, what do I do best? And just look at it from a skills standpoint. You've received evaluations of your performance over the years. Um, 
what did your supervisor say? What, what do you do best? You know, what would you lead with on your resume? What, what is it? <clears throat> Once you're clear on that, it gives you some great guidance towards what's next. So what do you do best leads you to what's next? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think a lot of times that connects to the things that you enjoy. So if you're really good at something, a lot of times you enjoy that. Maybe not, but uh, you know, if you can figure that out, I mean, I, I think the clarity around that is really critical. Are you reading my notes? No. That's my next bullet point. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so after, after you've totally connected with what you do best, where your skills are, go to what brings you joy. Um, combined with a reality check around your economic engine. So I like to play tennis, but I doubt seriously that I could make money at playing tennis. So when you look at what brings you joy, you need to connect with the reality of your economic engine, whatever drives uh, your value, if that makes sense. Uh, so when those two are combined, you've really got something now. Because if you just take those first two points, you've linked what you do best potentially with what brings you joy. And that thing that drives your economic engine comes into play. And now you're set for a real uh, purposeful look at, you know, what else you could do. Mm -hmm. it, it, it all comes together. Yeah, I like that. I think the, the connection of those two things is super important um, at the beginning of this decision-making process. So if you can find something that does bring you that joy, um, and, and, and if you can figure out how to make an income with that, <laughs> I mean, that's the ideal situation, certainly. Yeah. And probably a real situation. That's a reality. You know, you yeah. got, you got to do that. Right. It's uh, it's not hypothetical. You got yeah. to do that. Yeah. You know, I've asked people over the years, you know, what are you passionate about? Cause a lot of times they get stuck. They just kind of feel, you know, I'm, I'm in this role. I really don't like it. I don't like the organization or the boss or the team or whatever it is. And I asked that question, what are you passionate about? And a lot of people don't know. They really don't have a, a clear. <clears throat> they haven't thought answer. about it. No, they haven't thought about it. No, but They're I like too that. Busy. What brings you joy? That's, you know, that's an indicator of something that you could be, could really be a passion for you. Yeah. Yeah. So that ties directly to my third point, which would be, what is your purpose? Why, why are you here on this planet at this time? Um, what is it that you want to do? What is it that you want to accomplish? Um, step back and look at the big picture. And what is your purpose? You, you know, uh, and align that with, with this thinking. And now you've got something, something big. Think about this. You would have aligned your skill set, what you do best, with something that brings you joy and drives your economic engine with something you believe in. Yeah. So now you'd have something. And if you take those measures and step back from your current role, you could certainly figure out what's missing. And man, if you could find that, that all comes together into something really special. And that would be worth leaving your job for right. going, going in a different, go in a different direction. Mm -hmm. I, um, I just got off the phone with my niece who was telling me that her son is going to travel Europe for the next few months. Nice. And, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. You know, wow. And he's really just connecting with who is he? Mm -hmm. What's he want to do? You know, what's the purpose in his life? What brings him joy? And, you know, what's, what's that next thing? And I've never had that experience in my life to be able to do that. Uh, I was married at a very young age and, you know, providing for a family, but he's got this opportunity. What an incredible way to connect. And if we all think about that in today's job market, we, we sort of have that when you put all these pieces together. We've got that ability to step back and say, okay, what am I going to, where am I going to be 10 years from now? 
what's that look like? Um, what's, what's the meaning of my life and what's my legacy? And, you know, all that comes together in that series of things we've just discussed. Mm -hmm. I love that. I think, uh, I think that's such a fantastic opportunity that he has to do that. Uh, so many of us do get get really, you know, into the job market, and sometimes it's we we just kind of fall into a role, and then we just become good at it because we do it over and over again, and it really isn't something that is that driving force. So being able to take that time and and really analyze your life and find out what you're. Um, good at what are the things that bring you joy and you know how does that fit into your overall purpose you know I, I think I think that's a great opportunity and I think as as uh, you know older adults you know I think we need to do that with intent you know on a daily basis really yeah I, I would think that that would be fulfilling that that would cause you to step back and look at your life often we're so busy that we forget things like that. Yeah, we yeah. we just miss them, and they're they're right there in front of us, and we have to look for them and and find them, but they they can be incredibly meaningful and can change everything. Mm -hmm. So, Mark, what do you think? Do you think this is a? Because I'm thinking about this process. So, how long? I mean, how long do you, of a process do you think this would be? Uh, to me, it would seem like it would take you know, concerted effort to go through this. I don't think it's a decision you can make just overnight. No, I, I think you do need to be very thoughtful about it. Mm -hmm. um, we all have frustrating days at work or weeks, sometimes months or quarters, but that doesn't mean that we're in the wrong place. Um, winning big in a career uh, takes a considerable amount of effort. And, you know, you just, you, you need to, you need to play it out. Um, the, um, the Gallup organization put together an engagement, uh, survey that has lasted for decades now that is pretty significant that lays out the 12 pieces that are most significant in terms of engagement, uh, for, for an individual, um, in terms of their role. And if you simply look at those things, I think we did a podcast on it, didn't we? Yeah. Yep. We just talked about those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you look at those things and ask yourself, which of these do I have in my career today? It really brings it full circle. And we, we, we did a podcast around, okay, as a leader, you need to make sure that you're delivering these things to your team. But if you look at it individually and say, okay, Am I getting these things from my job today? It it totally turns the tables. Yeah. Can I, can I read the twelve real quick? Yeah, yeah. No, I love that. I guess I I always thought about that as a leader delivering it for your team, but not necessarily looking at it. Are we getting these things ourselves? Yeah, yeah. So just to answer these for yourself. Answer these for yourself. Um. So so and they're they are in order. So number twelve is less important than number one. Number 12, don't underestimate it now, just because it's 12, it made the top 12, uh, is simply that in this last year, I've had the opportunities at work to learn and grow. Yeah. People want that. Yep. And they want to grow, regardless of what level you're at, you want to grow, you want to develop and get better. That's number 12. So think about that in the context of the Gallup top 12. Number 11, in the last six months, someone ha at work has talked to me about my progress. That's important even to us as leaders. We need to know how we're doing. We need to feel good about that. Number 10, I, I wouldn't have guessed, but it's, it, it's significant. Uh, I have a best friend at work. Quite interesting that having a best friend at work ties you to that job, to that role, to that organization. And it's not something that you may want to leave. So something to think about. Uh, jump in anywhere, Brian. I'm going to keep going through yeah, these. Yeah, so just feel free to add. Yeah. Uh, number nine, my associates or my fellow employees 
are committed to quality work. That's big. Yeah. People want to be surrounded by people that that want to win, that want that are aligned to a purpose, that do good work. That's important. So does your organization hire quality people? Are they committed to that? Um, that that's a that's a big one. So that was number nine. Number nine. Yeah. Uh, number eight. The mission or purpose of my company is clear to me. Interesting. So Brian and I wrote a book called Speed of Purpose, and we found that most organizations do not have a clear purpose. And that's a big gap. Purpose drives everything. It drives every behavior. It drives the performance metrics of an organization. It's a reason to get out of bed and go to work in the morning. So if your organization doesn't have that, maybe you can fill that gap. Maybe you can bring the purpose to them. Maybe you can help them see it. Maybe you know it. But it is a big deal. It's what it's an adhesive. Does that make sense, Brian? Yeah. Oh, I like that. It's an adhesive that connects people to an organization. Number seven, at work, my opinion counts. Huh. Okay. So does it? And as a leader, boy, I better deliver that for my team. I better listen, thank people for their opinion respond to it, make them feel valued. It's a big deal. People want that. Number six, there is someone at work who encourages my development. All of us need development, regardless of role. We're all works in progress. So we're all looking to get better. So that is a big deal. So are you, are you getting that? Number five. Now we're in the big money here, Brian. Top five. <laughs> okay. My supervisor seems to care about me as a person. Wow. Yeah. So in a Zoom world, leaders struggle with this. We did a podcast on this. It's hard mm -hmm. to show that you care about someone over a Zoom video unless you're very much on purpose about this. And putting tactics forth. So how do you feel about that? Does your organization care about you? Does your supervisor care? Uh, do they care more on the day you resign? That's, that's troubling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's troubling. Oh my God, you're incredible. We yeah, can't don't leave. leave. Don't leave. So um, this is an incredible review because it really <laughs> lays it out. Yeah. Okay. We're in the, we're in the big money now. Number four. <laughs> In the last seven days, interesting that they chose that number. So in the last week, I've received recognition for my work. Wow. So often as leaders, we don't get recognized. Interesting. Yeah, definitely. Number, number three, big money. At work, I have the opportunity to do what I do best every day, period. Every day. I do what I do best. This one is a very tall order. Most of us could not answer, oh yeah, that that's me. This one's tough. Think about it. I'm surprised it's not number one. But it is what makes going home after a long day's work fulfilling. You feel good. You sleep well, but you can't wait to get up and get going again. Right. Yeah, I love that. So, that's number three. Number two, a strange one to be number two for me. The materials and equipment that I need uh, to do my job are provided to me. So apparently some people do not have, you know, all the stuff they need. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure you're asking for that stuff. If you need a new laptop, if you need a new something, whatever, make it clear. Mm -hmm. don't, don't be shy about that. All right, number one, I think we wrote a book about this. It's called Gapology. <laughs> yeah. And number one is I know what's expected of me at work. The metrics are clear. The measurements are clear. I, I know what's expected. 
That's number one. So uh, make sure that you're clear on that. Obviously, as a leader, make sure that's clear to everyone you work with. But those are the things that connect people to the job that they have or that they're looking for. How did you do on the on the 12? I mean, if, if you're missing half of these, then yeah, maybe you should be, you know, looking to do something different. Or could you influence these? within your organization and become the leader. The Gallup 12 are incredibly powerful and they really uh, can make you a great leader uh, when you understand them and when you deliver them to your team and um, when you uh, bring them to life. So anyhow, I've I've been talking too long, Brian. It's all yours. Yeah. Oh, no, you're fine. The uh, things that stood out to me, so there's a couple in here that fit exactly into what we're talking about tonight. So if you look at number eight, the mission or purpose of my company makes me feel my job is important. If you're not getting that, I guarantee you're not going to feel passionate about your current role. You're not going to feel connected to it at all. Um, And then uh, number three, you mentioned um, the at work, I have the opportunity to do what I do best every day. If you don't have that, um, those, those two things, I think, feed this feeling that people have about being dissatisfied with their, not only their role, but with the actual career path that they've chosen. And so often people, I mean, they spend their whole lives training and, and uh, growing in, in, in a particular field. And if they're not getting these simple things, they can start to question all of that education, you know, all the college they went through or training they went through or whatever it was. And I, I think it's really important to, to keep a lot of these things in mind that if you're not getting it early on, you know, start to seek out some of these things and and see if there's other ways that you can get them. Yeah. The Gallup 12 are pretty amazing. So any of you that don't have them, uh, just reach out for me. I'll send it to you. I carry it with me every day. Uh, As a leader, I try and deliver these. It's a tall order, but wow. If you don't have it in your role, then, um, it's something to look at, yeah. but again, you, you may be the solution. You may be the one. Yeah. And I will link, um, in the last podcast, when we talked about, it, I put a link in there. Um, so you can just click on that to go to the, um, Gallup site that has this. Um, so it, it'll be right there and I'll, I'll do the same for this week as well. Yeah. Okay. Or reach out for me on LinkedIn. Yep. Um, not a big social media guy, but I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, Mark, T-H-I-E-N-E-S, and uh, I will certainly uh, give you feedback on it as well. The last, the last thing I wrote down on this topic was, where would my skill set work best? So if you looked at the industry you're in or an adjacent industry, and you looked at your competitors, and you looked again at your skill set, where would it work best? So we, we often need to reevaluate ourselves in that way and see what, um, what the future holds for us. But often, again, it's a, it's a matter of what, what would be best for us, where we would fit in best, where we, would, where we would win, where we would be most successful, where we would be, you know, where we would find the greatest joy every day, where our skills would be appreciated and be successful. And that would drive you know, the economic engine that, uh, we all, you know, strive for. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I think, uh, often we try to, we, we think the answer lies in a completely different thing. And, and so often if we just look at our, our actual skills and then, you know, all these things that we've been talking about, but, you know, w- look at the actual skill set that we have right now. Um, you know, looking, how can we apply that maybe a little bit differently? And I think often, uh, you know, we, we try to start thinking about jumping into another field without really getting the education, not necessarily the education and the training to do it, but the education on, you know, is that field really something that you would want to do? So, you know, getting a mentor or or talking to somebody in, in that particular field or that, uh, you know, side of the business and finding out what it's really like, you know, there's a lot of videos out there that, that you can, um, you know, do, you can go on Udemy, like where we have our, um, training, uh, platform, 
uh, going to master class. There's a lot of different places that you can do that. Um, so get get educated on some of those things um, as well and see how does your skill set line up with some of that. Yeah. So there's there's lots of options out there today. We've given you more things to look at than you probably have time for, but uh, can <laughs> yeah. consider all of them and uh, make the right choice and, uh, you know, go be successful. I'm sure you already are. Excellent. This is good, Mark. All right. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Yep. Thanks much. We'll talk to you later. This has been a Gapology production. Visit us at gapology.org.